I almost didn't make this video. And the reason is, is that surgery is not a race. You don't get any extra points or credit by going fast or rushing through anything. And the best way to do any surgery is not quickly per se, it's to do it well, to do it safely. That said, the reason I do make this video, this DMEC in two minutes surgical video, is because there are two important pieces of information that I can't think of any other way to convey. Um, the first is, is that I think that I would like to try to reduce the intimidation factor of this operation for doctors and patients. Some people are not doing DMEC or having DMEC because they're worried about the complexity or the challenges of this type of corneal transplant procedure. But if you can do the operation in two minutes, I mean, that's less time than it takes to, to brush your teeth sometimes. Then how challenging can it really be? So, I mean, if you're worried about this operation, um, it, it may make you feel better to know that this can really be kind of a quick, no sweat kind of thing to do. And the second reason I make this video is because I really do genuinely think that there is some value in doing an operation quickly. And the reason why doing surgery quickly is a value is because it's more comfortable for the patient rather than lying on the operating room table for 20 minutes or an hour. If you can keep people there just for a minute or two, it's better for the patient, all things considered. It's also probably better for the doctor because surgery involves such intense laser focused. It's just tough to keep that up if you're working on somebody for an hour or two hours. And if you can do things quicker, all things being equal, you're able to concentrate with more energy and vigor on what you're doing. You're able to stay focused for the whole duration of the procedure. So this video that I want to share with you is a patient that we operated on in our office just a week ago. This is a repeat DMEC for a failed previous DMEC graft, and the total duration of this surgery is two minutes long. This is the full unedited recording, and I want to walk you through the steps of the operation. And you'll notice they are all unhurried. They're unrushed. At no point during the surgery does it look like we're trying to go quickly but things just kind of naturally happen in this smooth way when you have a normal routine for doing them. I make the paracentesis like I always do, two over here by me and then one distally nasally, and then I make a main incision using a three millimeter steel keratome, and I like a big wound. The reason a big wound is advantageous is because you can slip the injector in without having to grab it with an instrument and lift it up and stuff the injector in, so that's really nice. And also, uh, it allows the wound to leak around the injector. So when you inject the graft, it doesn't jack the pressure up in the eye and cause the graft to be expelled. Stripping the DMET graft that's failed off the back of the patient's cornea, that's easily done. These failed DMET grafts are thick and fibrotic. They don't tend to shred and tear like a native virgin endothelium. So they're easy to remove and also nice fortuitously this patient already has a far inferior peripheral iridotomy, so we don't have to make a new PI. Now, one thing I always do before injecting the graft is I replenish the patient's anesthesia. That's me putting more lidocaine inside of the eye because you want the patient maximally comfortable and still during DMAT graft unfolding. So I put a little more lidocaine in the eye. I deepen the chamber just to give me room to inject these new cells with some BSS. And then here I'm nosing the injector, which is in a glass syringe, up to the mouth of the wound, and I inject it into the eye. First step is to deepen the chamber to get the graft to perk up and open up and see how it's curling. That looks fortuitously right side up to me, so I shallow the chamber to get a little bit more compression. I shuffle the graft over to the center of the eye, and I start applying these Dirazomer taps to the surface of the cornea. The graft kind of wants to squirt away from me as I do that. So you'll hear and notice it's positioned nasally. So I sort of shuffle it down more into the center part of the eye and that gives it room to unfold. And now I have the graft fully unfolded and I'll try to lift it up to the back surface of the cornea using an air bubble. And you'll notice all of these manipulations are taking place via the main wound because it's so much more convenient and accessible than any paracentesis. And that's it. That's the the end of the operation. So this completely unedited two and a half minute long surgery, the reason that I show this is I think 
because I hope it gives you confidence if you're watching this and you're a doctor and you're thinking about, oh, the technical complexity of DMEC, it's really not that big of a deal. You know, it's probably easier and simpler than lots of the complicated cataract surgeries you're already doing. If you're a patient and you're worried about having this operation, really, you know, it's probably not, not not the worst thing you'll do that day, much less that week in terms of just discomfort and associated with things of your normal, ordinary life. Um, I, I think that the trick to doing these operations quickly is to have an organizational efficiency, to have things done in the same way every time, to have a good team around you, to have a good staff who knows what they're doing, and also just fundamentally to love what you do. So hopefully this video is useful to you for whoever is watching it. And if there's anything I can do to help you in the future, especially if you're a cornea surgeon interested in starting with DMEC, please let us know. We've got observership programs at Parker Cornea. We have here people here every single day from all over the world to work with us and learn with us and to teach us things ourselves. So if this is at all interesting to you, please reach out to us. Thanks so much.